What's up, everyone? Pittsburgh White Sports back again with another deck tech. I am joined this week by Andy. What's up, everybody? And we are going to go over Door Standby Ruby. It is a deck that you are pretty likely to see if you are heading to Springfest, either next weekend or the uh, following ones in uh, Houston. And I believe there's one more uh, if you're in South America. I believe that one's later. Can't remember exactly. But we are going to go over it. It is a, basically an update to the 8-door Cinder deck that we have covered quite a bit between uh, this channel and the Burn 1 channel. A couple times we talked about it, but because of the prevalence of tap counter in the upcoming meta, especially post Hall Live, two of the biggest decks out there can play tap. Uh, one of the big feathers in Ruby's cap is that it can play the level three Ruby. So we are going to update that strategy to use the new Ruby so that we can uh, make sure we play around tap counter and just tell our opponent they can't do anything during their attack phase. So here's the deck list all laid out. Uh, if you are just here for the list, we always have the Encore decks link in the description. Please leave us a like on the way out. It really helps us out. But yeah, you can see it's pretty much the same list. We've cut the Cinder stuff and we've put the ruby necessary cards in there are a couple optimizations and changes uh that we've made as we've played the list as we've tuned it so we will go over those as we hit them but card by card if you haven't seen the list before we are playing four neon cat neon cat is one of the most disgusting cards that you can be playing at level zero even though it is off colors on play if your opponent has one or less characters in their center stage choose a cost zero alert character in your opponent's center stage send it to the bottom of the deck so if your opponent opens a runner your opponent opens a big card you slam down neon cat and you just send at the bottom deck and then it's gone and then at the beginning of your opponent's draw phase you reveal top card if it's a level one or higher card this card returns to your hand but if you go first and you slam neon cat down and the card coin flips your opponent must attack you twice this and then if you go second obviously you dunk your opponent's uh single attacker in the front row or maybe force them to play two attackers take a neg one uh, that you kill anyway or give you a clean cut slot uh, which is pretty cool so yeah andy i don't know your opinions on neon exactly but i think this card's like the most obnoxious card in the english meta at zero for sure yeah, I, I would agree. It's definitely up there. It's one of the most obnoxious things to like have to actually sit down and play against. It's just pretty disruptive against like any strategy at level zero, whether your opponent's running just like a center runner and they just want to like kind of like field one card going first and just have like a big card that can move around and not get hit uh, or any other sort of traditional runner or like even against your opponent's clean cuts. Like if you go first, let's say, right, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the neon cat pot can pop back to hand denying their clean cut or even if your opponent does clean cut something thing then they're just leaving one card in their front row for you to dunk with neon cat maybe so all throughout the level zero game uh neon cat is very very disruptive and later in the game you just throw it in your clock when you or you throw it in your level or clock when you don't need it anymore it's also particularly disgusting against hall alive because they play big cards not runners a lot of the time and their best level like their best going first play is slamming down the aqua ricky and this sends it to bottom deck so they don't even get their effect unlike ruby so it's really really good if you're playing ruby or playing into ruby this uh this is the card you want to have or the card you want to look for oh, even, even in the ruby mirror the card is Gross. actually quite relevant too because um most people are running the ruby finisher now uh and you need to get a specific card into your memory to facilitate that and that card needs to get reversed so if you just send it to the bottom of the deck um that can be difficult for them to get that card in their memory then yep and then to round out our uh plusing level zeros we are playing three of the clean cut on play reveal top as long as it's a character you give any character 2k including yourself uh so obviously it's either a 35 clean cut or it's a pump later game really good utility uh on top of being a clean cut so it gives you that plus thing gives you that aggressive level zero push on your second turn uh which is really really nice or if you go first you know or, or if you're going second on your first turn land this down uh, with a neon cat dry field clean cut and then pop a neon cat back to hand can be pretty gross so that's going to be our plusing uh lineup new year notably not playing uh the cinder ricky or any plusing effects actually just due to space because we must must play four of the Pira on reverse Rize. So on reverse, reveal up to three, add a character, ditch a card, and then on reverse, go to memory. You need to put two of this in memory throughout the game. That is why we are playing four. The card either needs to be engraved for another card that we play or be seen at level zero so that we can send it to memory and make sure that our ruby is online. We are all in on the ruby at level three because, again, we're trying to play around tap counter. Tap counter is a really big part of the meta. So because of that, we need to make sure we resolve our ruby combo. So we need two Piras. So we are playing four. That's about as far as that goes uh, and then we are going to play three of the ironwood because it's the best costless filter in the set on play you can discard a character draw a card and then you can discard any card reveal top uh and then salvage a character that level or lower uh from your waiting room so it's some costless selection and filter uh to help you either dig into climaxes or uh salvage uh cards so and it always exchanges four level zeros you can always pick up your brainstorm your climax swap your 
Piras if you need to send more, if you just need to throw them out there at level zero. Uh, so always a really good filter card. And it's one of our best blue splashes at zero. The card's really, really good, uh, even though it has a very small power line. The utility is uh, insane. Mm -hmm. I, th I think being blue is a, a big feather mm -hmm. for this card. Uh, you, you are, I was going to say it if you didn't, but it is one of the best blue fixes you can run in the set. Yeah, the card, the card's an insane utility card and happens to be blue. Really good. Moving on to Brainstorms. We are playing three. We're playing a 2-1 split. Two Noras, self-tap salvage. When you get a reverse, you can give an extra 500 power somewhere, which is pretty good with the uh, Ruby's board break strategy. And then the spammable Blake. At the beginning of your climax phase, you can give a 1,000. Also good with the board break strategy. And then spammable search ditch. Uh, so the Blake is one of your best, like, two-card stockouts early game, as well as just being some deck access. And then, you know, Nora just being a self-tap salvage brainstorm is really, really good with a good uh, bonus effect. So obviously, you want to clean cut one of these uh, in the early game to do your best clean cut targets. But obviously, you will you will take any clean cut in Ruby. The raw card advantage is not. Last, Blake is also yeah. blue. Yeah, she's also blue. Not a card we want to level, but it is blue. If it happens to be in your clock. Lastly, at zero, uh, two little tech cards here. We are playing the Yang Framed. It is a uh, 3K if you have two or more other Remnant characters. Then is a Drop Search. A little bit of extra deck access there. We're mostly a Grave deck, so a little couple deck access deck cards are pretty nice. And then Climax Swap, uh, on play, Surveil Top, Slug at Top, leave it, leave it there, put it in your waiting room, and then Climax Swap. Pretty good uh, utility effect. Not as good as the top two rearranges, but still pretty good nonetheless. And that's one of our Climax Assurance cards. Our other one is at level eight. Getting into our level one, we are playing the TD Ruby combo. Uh, probably the best combo in Ruby to be playing at one. Uh, if you're not playing pure standby or doing something weird with the Weiss. So it is a on attack 7,500 with the Climax that is out of the gate, challenging 1-1 one, one standby targets uh, with our extra pumps that we run. Obviously the Blake spammable. You got the rolling with the Nora. You got the 2K pump from the clean cut. Uh, you can very easily challenge standby lanes uh, at one. And then after your first Ruby gets a reverse, you can roll that over into your next Ruby. You got uh, seven, five, then nine, five, or you do seven, five, seven, five, 11, uh, 11, five, or you can start at nine, five, and then roll other ones over and crack into 11, five on your last one if you have triple. So really good for breaking down boards. And because it has such high power, it's pretty relevant into level two as well. It's a level one that you can like recycle throughout the game and just keep playing it, uh, which has good synergy with the climax that it's on, which is a door. Also has a double combo with the Weiss, uh, which we'll get into later. Uh, but this is like the card that you're looking out for, especially if you're playing standby, if you're playing into Ruby. And if you're playing Ruby, it's your best answer to standby, uh, of which there is quite a bit or, or chunky cards at uh, level one. Yeah, I feel like that that's probably like the big reason to play Ruby in general, I feel. It's like it's, it's like a very good anti-meta deck right now. Every The, the meta is really just so big and standby focused. You know, you're either playing against like Mushoku or Slime that's just putting a bunch of huge shit really quickly in front of you. Mm -hmm. So smaller on reverse combos aren't going to be big enough. Um, and even the decks that aren't playing standby, there's a lot of Hollow Live going around right now, for example, that just tries to wall up really big with the Rushias. So you, you can expect power to really be an important factor in most matchups. So the Ruby combo does scale very nicely into that. You know, getting to 7,500 itself with the Climax down. Um, as well as, you know, Ruby does have a lot of additional pumps as well. They gain clean cut from before, being able to get this up to 9,500 on a first lane. Um, mm -hmm. And stuff like the uh, Nora, Nora and Blake brainstorms that can give you additional power on your turn. Yeah, it's a, it's just a lot of power, uh, even that early. Moving. There's not really... Uh, I was going to say, too, like, there's nothing really that hates on, like, actually getting reverses right now, either. At level yeah, one. barely anything. Pack on Titan and Kona Super are kind of, like, low rep at the moment, so... Yeah, really you should have no fear. trouble finding reverses. All right, level one tech cards here. We are playing two of the Uniform Pira. This card is on play. If you have two or more other, draw a ditch. Nice little hand filter. Is a level one or lower bomb, uh, so it'll always trade with stuff. Good into standby. Can clear off uh, level ones that you can otherwise reverse. Your uh, boards don't line up exactly to crack over completely with the Ruby. And then on death, the most important effect, when this card hits waiting room, you can take a level zero Pira from your grave and put it in your memory. So with four Pira at zero and two of this peer at one even in my worst most dog shit games i have not with two memory and i think if you want to make sure that you do that every game i'm pretty sure this line is necessary i don't think you can shave level zero peers and i don't think you can shave this card either i think that a 4-2 split is pretty much necessary to ensure that you hit that every single game because this is wise things go wrong your deck hates you your opponent sticks a ton of damage things aren't going well uh, you have to make sure that your cards at least work so that you have a chance to come back 
back and win the game. You can always win, no matter how behind you are, because that's just how Weiss works. You always play the games out. So having that 4-2 split, just make sure that you can hit that every single game, even when the games go poorly. We also have the Winter. Yeah, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I, I think the Uniform Pyrrha, um, it, it was definitely a card that I was very low on at first and figured, you know, I'll just run four of the Pyrrha Rizes. You know, those are great to open with, and they just naturally go into your memory. So by the time you get level three, you should have them there. But, you know, like you said, stuff can and will go wrong in games of wise. Um, and, and the fact that the, the Pyrrha Rize actually needs to be reversed doesn't mean that, like, if you get shot, like, all the way from, like, level two very quickly to level three or something, and you have to, like, you're trying to, like, go for your combo, like, maybe a turn quicker than you expected, let's say, um, you, you can't just, like, play over the the pure reasons to just get them into your memory like you could like a chiuri to get the effect of fire so like you can sometimes get stranded on your actual kill turn if you just end up getting like eating a big chunk of damage randomly so ha having the peer the uniform pure to be able to help get the 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 reasons in your memory in panic situations is important i guess i'd say yeah i don't I know agree, if i phrased completely. that very well no i agree completely i think that's uh exactly the reason you play the card rounding out our other level ones we play the winter just because because it's good in two standby matchups. It's 2k if you're playing the game, so it's always a 6-5 on your turn. Uh, and then on attack, if you have two or more other characters, it gets uh, 6k against level twos. So it uh, knocks down Ghislaine, knocks down other 2-2 standby targets uh, at level one, so it's just a little tech card there. Then we are also playing the Neptune because of uh, Rushia matchups. It is a 1-1 Adachi, so it hard removes the character across from it, sends it to bottom deck, it's a higher level than your opponent. It's on early plays, uh, pretty good into both Rushia and stuff like Slime that has the sheet and then it also on play gives 1500 power so that you can challenge other lanes pretty nice has good synergy with your blake which also sits at very uh high power levels at level two uh, so you can play your early play play this get over two lanes um uh, at least stress your opponent's hand even if they have hand on core pretty nice or hard remove cards uh, with the adachi moving into level two we are playing two of the weiss teamwork which goes with the same door as the level one uh which is on play uh, i guess 500 times board including itself anywhere you don't have to give it to itself uh, you can give it somewhere else you can snipe a lane with this and then give power to your Blake or something. And then on attack, you choose this and another card with the door down. And then those characters get on reverse, uh, check up to two, add up to two characters. Uh, so this is really good when you either get rocketed to level two on first deck when things go poorly, or you're at level two and like you play your Blake early play, which is digital stock and you need to refill your hand. Uh, you can rip an entire new hand with this pretty early. And because this card exists, if you are able to sculpt for it, you can actually stop clocking fairly early in the game for a 1k1 deck or like a hybrid standby deck you don't have to clock as much as possible if you are able to resolve this later on if you like have two doors or something like that uh, so it saves you a little bit there it's a really nasty card it can create really good comeback situations for you and it's the main reason we're like specking into enough blue uh to not only play our early play but to also play this i don't know if you have any other comments on the double combo andy i know you're a pretty big fan in general yeah i, I really do like me some double combos but uh yeah i think the card pretty much speaks for itself and you know anything that uh it doesn't cover i think you covered all right then we also have the crow which is a 2-1 free fresh counter free fresh counters are really good especially when you're running triggers that can salvage you trigger a door after triggering other climaxes on that turn uh this can give you a chance to win a game you otherwise uh never would after having those unlucky uh situations occur uh so that's why we're playing it it's just the most effective counter here you could run the memory kick if you want in this slot it doesn't really matter but uh, i think the free fresh is just generally better because uh, it will win you games you want otherwise again yep. we are playing the ruby rose uh finisher it is a 11k if you are playing ruby because uh, every character is random on play heal which is nice we're going to be at seven healers with this list and then climax combo when you play the standby you rest this card uh on climax placement deal three and then claw kick the character across from her you do have to choose the so hexproof does dodge it so bang dream is going to be a little weird they have those uh pareos in the back if they have the pareo on the front you can claw kick the pareo first and the pareo is gone and the choo-choo's are no longer hexproof which is kind of cool it's a little bit of a skill check you can do to your opponent if they're playing bang dream if they don't know to put the prey on the back row against ruby uh, you can get rid of that first and then kick them but in standby matchups and matchups that have tap counter which is hull live and mushoku uh this card is invaluable it always gets rid of the card across from it it's on climax placement but your opponent can't play tap counter because the card does not attack the downside being this card doesn't attack so you do not generate stock uh so you're gonna have to keep that in mind when you're planning out your finisher turn and of course you also need the two peers in memory so it's really good into 
the meta because everything's playing tap counter everything being the two biggest decks in the meta right now which is uh all alive and uh mishoku not all hollow Alive builds will run tap counter uh but a couple of the big ones definitely will so having that out especially when those decks sit down against ruby they're definitely playing on edge because a big part of their top end which is relying on being able to stall out games with tap counter just doesn't exist so even though the ruby doesn't push a lot and we've talked about this a lot when we talk about ruby how ruby isn't a very explosive finisher the fact that she plays so well into those decks that crutch so hard on tap counter makes her the better choice right now as opposed to something like cinder which has to attack and is very susceptible to tap yeah i i think the reason you're playing ruby right now if you're getting ready for like these uh spring fest and regional tournaments uh i, I think ruby's a really really good de deck to take right now that matches up so well against the meta and i think the ruby finisher is the reason you are playing or would choose to play ruby as a set at a high competitive level um i guess one more thing i'd want to add on to to what carmen said um while ruby is really good in the, into the meta where you're like planning at stuff that's always going to be bigger than you and you just like point at them and kill them with ruby uh just whatever's in front of it uh in the matchups where your opponent is not walling up on the field um do realize that your ruby finisher doesn't work if they don't have a character in front of you or you won't get the full effect off of it you won't get the clock kick so in 1k1 matchups maybe you know do do keep in mind that you know maybe you don't want to leave your big blake early plays up in the front row in those matchups sometimes you might want to like push your back row up and just let those cards die that way you have a target to clock kick yeah because it is a little bit of extra push versus like a direct lane you get that clock kick which is guaranteed damage yeah maybe, maybe you can phrase it a bit better than me but like you need don't let your opponent play around your clock kick by just like letting them crash shitters into your Big like board, lingering yeah. level twos and level threes yeah you can definitely to keep play in, in such a way that you have those targets especially in the mat uh the game states where like the clock kicks are guaranteed where your opponents at uh damage numbers where if you have the clock kicks you only need to stick one attack and then the clock kicks seal the game for you because they're guaranteed but definitely something to keep in mind rounding out our level threes you're probably going to see some combination of these in any ruby deck we're playing three of the blake early play mash you early play super good two or less a thousand power for each of your back rows and ditch any card heal to dock super efficient very big early play healer always nice again bringing us up to seven total healers so we're pretty resilient one of the salem which is both a stock swap and an icy tail your choice icy tail for five or stock swap your opponent makes it so that if you're holding the card or you salvage the card if your opponent's trying to bank up on stock just trying to disrespect you that you have that out or if they start paying out their stock you have the icy tail which is still a gotcha effect in end game as well as being 11k oh, which is pretty nice same power condition as our blake and then the neo if our opponent is crashing out board and we have the ability to get this card we already have it it can summon cards to your opponent's board by uh ditching our remnant character you can summon two cards to their open slots so you have targets for your ruby to clock kick as well as just being able to pay one and salvage a climax on play so these are our two climax assurance cards between the neapolitan and the climax swap you should have no trouble having your climax at end game even though we don't have any cantrip effects we have these two cards and la <laughs> and lastly i want to talk about this little package here so two of the ruby vital festival which is on play salvage and then end of attack pay to ditch any two cards burn two nice little off finisher there as well as a selective cantrip and then the td weiss so on play gains a thousand power uh for each of your other remnant or each of your other characters including itself then get to 14 5 and then on reverse pay to ditch two characters restand so if you have the ruby vital festival and you somehow can't get the climax you can play down the ruby salvage the weiss play down the weiss and then you have a five attack climaxless finisher that only takes four stock when you draw up to do you have to have a lot of hand but the ruby refunds hand and then the weiss is just you know your standard ditch too but even if you have to go down to no hand to do it it does give you a way to push for game in those games where maybe you're behind maybe the game is going poorly you can't get that climax into your hand you have a basically one card pivot climaxless five instances of damage finisher that you can do on a dime and that's because the ruby vital festival is so good which is why we're going to play two the ruby is really good just in general because you can always pick this card up off a door because no matter what happens at level three whether you draw your climax whether you go to level three early you can always cantrip into the best card to answer the situation you can salvage a blake to heal down you can salvage a ruby to put to the back door to heal and then go for your combo next turn if you have the climax and they're just not ready yet or if you need to push for game when you're behind you can grab the weiss as i said and do a nice little five attack finish there uh, at end game and try to push or game yeah or the ruby uh, also seems really good just to put in like uh the empty lane because the ruby finisher needs the a character across from it to clock 
block kick. Mm -hmm. So if your opponent doesn't have a full field, you can throw one of the, you can throw Vital Festival Ruby down uh, in the open lane because you don't need a reverse. It's also pretty decent if you hit incidental standbys and you don't have a combo Ruby engraved to throw out uh, because the on attack finisher effect or end of attack finisher effect is not on like turn it's played just all the time. Mm -hmm. So you can do that. Unlike the Weiss, the Weiss the card has to come from hand, so you can't really stand by the Weiss out, uh, but you can stand by the Ruby. So looking at the deck again before we uh, wrap up here, I want to get into why there are no standby support cards. There are no one ones. There are no two twos. Even though we are playing for standby, why is that? After doing a lot of testing, it is actually best, no matter when you trigger standby throughout the game or when you play standby, that's the only climax in your hand. It is always better to stand by the next level of your combo than it is to play any of the two twos or anything like that. Because you don't want to stress your hand where if the two twos get reversed, if they're alone or something like that, it's hitting over a 10k yang is pretty easy in the current meta. Uh, you don't want to stress your hand by wanting to ditch these cards to keep up a two soul beater uh, when you could instead prepare for following turns. Where if you hit a standby at level zero, you put out a uh, one zero ruby, you hit a standby at one, you put out a two one weiss, you hit a standby at uh, two, you put out a three two ruby. So you're just preparing your combos for the following turns on the standby, which weirdly plays much better than trying to cut cards to play standby cards that when you draw them are dead in hand. So this why you're not playing any dead cards that you draw, but you're also doing something impactful with your standbys, uh, even if you're not dedicating any slots to standby specifically. Once you're at two, though, putting out those rubies is pretty impactful because they are 11Ks. Uh, they're pretty beefy. So those are reasonable bodies to put maybe in front row. But otherwise, you're going to be standbying extra combo pieces to your back row. Any comments, yeah. Andy, before we get out of here? Uh, Yeah, I, I think, you know, not running, you know, one ones or two twos in a standby deck seems kind of weird at first. But, you know, I, I think this isn't your typical standby deck um for the fact that you know you know the, the whole ruby finisher combo package does take up a lot of deck slots you know having to run all the pure reasons all the level one pures to help ensure it um that, that takes up a lot of deck spots that you'd otherwise want to use on like let's say uh level one backups to help defend your cards um and you look at like the two one weiss for uh the the second half of the level one combo those kind of take the spots of your two twos so if, when we've tried this deck and you know we've run like the two twos alongside of the two ones and the backups alongside the level one combo and stuff it just gets too bloated and you lose all your tech cards like you wouldn't be able to run any of the neptunes or the like the level one neptune or winter uh which are like much more impactful cards than trying to play a half-assed standby strategy and like you're not to mention the yeah. fact too that um like, again most standby decks you know you're continuously just building your board because that's kind of like what the whole goal of the deck is to do but again the ruby finisher is kind of an odd one in the sense that you don't care how big you get because you just instantly kill what's in front of you so you actually want to lose field going into your final turn anyway so you can use the ruby finisher yeah it's like you're playing the ruby finisher for the effect the trigger of the climax doesn't matter as much which is weird it's it's usually the other way around the trigger is always very important but here specifically in this specific meta you care a lot more about the effect of the card than you do about the uh, trigger itself mm -hmm. all right wrapping up here card games competitive we don't own or operate them but we are in them uh, if you are looking to play games over webcam or weiss fight or maybe just talk about the game definitely give those a look global and na if you're looking to pick up ruby or any other set you can definitely give those a look there they are the biggest buy sell trade hubs for the game uh there's also translations for upcoming japanese sets that you can read there and those are also in the discord as well and card of the day channels uh, that are managed by our community awesome and then if you want to try out ruby you don't have your cards yet or you're still putting some pieces together definitely check out weiss fight you can grab the encore decks link from our description shove it in there uh point your browser to weiss fight type that in and then you are playing weiss in your browser with people from all over the world uh without having to you know buy anything on steam or anything like that you don't have to install tts runs right in your browser similar to dueling book or any of the other simulators that are out there for other card games uh, if you are interested in supporting the project or have feedback definitely check out the discord and the patreon uh those are also linked in the description upcoming content we have to do tokyo avengers now that that's out uh, we got to do that set review uh there's some other stuff coming down the pipeline right i think there's some other sets coming out let me check here attack on titan will be coming out soon and then we also have to do wince 2 wince 2 is coming out so we got some set reviews i know it's been a while it's our last set review um but those will be coming we know everybody enjoys those yeah look forward to
forward to deck techs for uh, updated Quince, updated Fate Grand Order. Uh, oh yeah, FGO's coming out soon as well. Mm -hmm. Don Machi, that's also coming out. Oh yeah, out. Don Machi. Yeah, you have the deep dive, but I'm sure there'll be some other stuff to go over as well. 